So today we're going to go over some of the major policies for this course. These are all listed in the syllabus. There are a couple ways to get there. One is from the Blinn homepage. Notice if you scroll down to the bottom and click on Access Syllabi and CVs, you can do a search here. You can find the syllabi for any of your courses. So that's a very handy tool. The other way to go directly to our syllabus is to look in our course content under the course orientation there will be a link with a little purple box that says concourse syllabus and you can click on that and it will take you to the syllabus. This example is not taking you to it because this is a shell course, this is not your course. This is also not the exact syllabus for your course but yours will look the same. So it will start out with some basic information about the course, um, the description of the course, and go down through um, some policies that come from the level of the college, then the division, the humanities, all humanities classes, and then eventually at the bottom, instructor policies. So that will be helpful. And at the very end should be a schedule, which will look more like this. This. Right here. All right. So, some of the important things that you need to know about. The first one is my contact information. So we do not meet in person. Uh, we don't have meeting times as a class. You can meet with me in my office on the Bryan campus in the D building, room 174. You can call my phone number here that's listed, 979-209-8295. That is my office phone. It will get answered when I am in my office. It is not a cell phone, so it will not receive text messages. Um, you can also send me email at rebecca.covartblend.edu or through eCampus anytime. And I answer those within business hours. My office hours will always, there will be a link on eCampus for you that you can see my office hours for the semester if you want to make appointments. You also need to pay attention to the major assignments. And again, this is a sample syllabus, so yours might be slightly different, but if you scroll down to breakdown, it will tell you the assignments for your semester. Yours are broken down like this. So I've used a pie chart to show you how your assignments stack up to your grade. Do you notice that half the class here is essays and they get more important as we continue. So we start with 10%, then 15%, then 25%. You also have 20% participation grade and 5% grade that is dependent on your peer reviews for the essays. You'll have a midterm worth 5%, final exam worth 15%, and your presentation grade is 5% of your grade as well. So those things make up your grade and you'll want to make sure that of course you give, devote your time correspondingly to what's going to affect your grade the most. So you probably spend a lot more time on essay three than you do on something like a participation grade. Participation will include any of the little things we do. Discussion posts, if I ask you to submit your uh, thesis for something, I ask you to submit a response, any of those things, they all add up into your participation grade. One of the important policies that you need to be aware of is our academic honesty policy. We have a list on the syllabus of various things that can constitute academic dishonesty. It's worth pointing out if you look at the um, place where we have our distribution that we also do have an original work policy, which means that we expect your work to be original to our class this semester. So for example, if you took the same class last semester, maybe you quit halfway through the semester, but you already wrote, let's say, a Rogerian argument, and you say, hey, I already wrote one of these, let me submit that. We would not accept that for a grade because it is not original to the class for the semester. Um, we also will not allow you to submit someone else's work as your own, take credit for sources um, that are not given credit, copy items from a test, any of those sort of things. There's more about this in the student handbook as well. What you need to know about that is our policy. If that occurs on an assignment, it is up to the instructor to determine the severity of the assignment and the consequences. Maybe that will include rewriting a paper, depending on the situation. Um, that may result in a grade of zero for your first offense. We also do report these incidents to our division and we keep a record. So if you have been told before that you are being reported for academic dishonesty, you need to be especially careful because your second offense will receive a much harsher penalty than your first. Um, keep in mind this also is 
uh, we take in consideration your knowledge in the course. So we work on teaching you how to use sources throughout the semester. Earlier in the semester, we're going to be a bit more lenient with what we expect you to know, whereas by the time we get to say the final essay, the essay three, we expect you to have learned how to integrate your sources properly. So by the time we get to essay three, either you and you still have a problem, either you really haven't learned one of the really basic concepts that we've been working on all semester, or it is a, it's a problem. So either way, your essay three, you're going to expect to get a harsher penalty than you do if you're having problems with, say, essay one. As usual, you always want to come to us with uh, any questions you have so that you can make sure that you're doing things right before the grade is assigned. The last policy that I want to talk about is the attendance policy that is very important and it's a bit different for online courses. So in a face-to-face -face course, we go by weeks of class. In an online course, I've divided the class into weeks too. So we basically have two meetings per week even though they are online. For each of those meetings, you have a group of assignments that you need to do. I will count you present for the course if you complete at least one of the assignments for each unit. So you should have um, maybe a quiz or a, a, a paper that you have to turn in, any of those things. Now, just signing into eCampus is not enough to be considered present. You have to actually complete at least one of the assignments. If you miss one unit, that is one absence. If you miss two units, that is two absences, which is the equivalent of one week. At that point, Bloom requires that we have you sent an email that says you've already missed a week of the course and you need to be careful. Um, if you missed four units, that is four absences, that is the point at which we withdraw you from the course, which is really helpful to you because at that point you end up failing the course anyway because you're missing so much work. So it actually helps a lot of students out getting withdrawn instead of having uh, an F on their transcript. Um, with face-to-face -face classes, sometimes we have excused absences versus unexcused absences. With an online course, you don't really have that because, say, you are expected to be somewhere for an entire day, well, you just do your work for that unit on a different day. Um, so it's really flexible and that can help you not have absences. However, if you do have a severe issue, for example, if you are called into military duty and you're going to be out of commission away from a computer for... Um, like half the week or more at a time, then please do let me know and we will work around that to make sure that you uh, don't rack up absences that would be considered excused. Those are not all the policies for this course. There are other policies and I urge you to read the syllabus carefully. You will see on our syllabus quiz that we do cover some of these important policies as well. Please let me know immediately if you have any questions about the policies for the class, for the division, or my own personal policies.